Well, the river cam is, well, not a huge amount going on there, hoping for a great teeming herd of wildebeest to come down, but I think they're still a little bit far south. Let's go back to cul-de-sac crossing, where we can see a number of hippopotami. There they are, the same ones. They're just out of the water now. Not doing a great deal. Uh, why would you if you didn't have to? Oh, there looks like an interesting bird. Let's go down and have a look and see what that is. It looks like a blacksmith lapwing, but it may be a slightly more exotic creature. It is indeed. Right, there we are. You have a look at that and you tell me what you think it is. Hashtag Safari Live. I uh, have seen this bird before. I have now, obviously, since I saw it last, forgotten what it is. It is a lapwing of sorts. And if I am not much mistaken... Hang on a second, I'll find it for you now. Is it? No, it's not a common blacksmith lapwing. It's a spur-winged lapwing. There we go. A spur-winged lapwing. So named because, unsurprisingly, it has a... Everybody together? A... That's it. A spur on its shoulder, which it probably uses to attack uh, its uh, fellows when... Well, when things get a little bit hot on the competition front for ladies. I think that's a wonderful picture of the spur-winged lapwing and the hippopotamus, which is not in fact dead, but fast asleep. Now, many of you may be wondering what it is that we've been doing here, why you haven't been seeing us very often. And the main reason is that we've been rehearsing at night time. We've been following lions, Scott and Brent and Jamie have been following lions all night long. And then we've, of course, been rehearsing for our TV shows. And what's interesting is that we, all of us, have told you countless times how, oh, there's another, wa there's a wagtail, pied wagtail, how... Lions sleep for 20 hours of every day. Well, I'm going to tell you, the lions here don't sleep for anything like that. I imagined when we went out to follow these lions at night, well, they might move around for four hours or so, kill something and eat it, and then go to sleep. Well, they do a huge amount of moving. And in fact, Jamie and Scott were both awake all night the other night because their lions just didn't stop moving around, trying to hunt, uh, sort of reaffirming their bonds. Then they'd lie down briefly but as soon as they had sort of seemed to settle, they'd get up and move again. So unlike these hippopotamus, the lions of this area don't seem to be doing an enormous amount of sleeping, which is uh, wonderful if you try to film them. And Lexi, you're wondering how long hippos sleep for. I think you'll find that although they don't sleep particularly soundly all the time, I think you'll find that they doze an enormous amount. Here are some Egyptian goose. So, I, I mean, I'm going to go with up to 18 hours or so. There's some very nice jippo geese and another few spur-winged lapwings just enjoying the morning. It is warming up slightly, but I've got to tell you, we've had two chilly days in a row now. These geese, of course, very few dams here. In fact, almost no standing water at all. This is a much more sort of... Um, natural state of affairs, for example, in, from that perspective. But interestingly, as I say that, let's just pan across the water and see what we can find. This ecosystem is to a large extent man-made. And when you next visit me in the studio, I'll show you the map of how it all happened. But basically, the fact that it is so clear and free of any trees has got a lot to do with a human presence in this area for, well, many millennia indeed. And the fact that it's a wildlife area now owes its uh, existence, really, uh, very largely to the rinderpest epidemic that had occurred at the end of the 19th century. Can we go to the dusty crossing camera, please? There we are. Um, and what that means is, and I'll just quickly tell you this as, we, as I pan around, well, as I push the controls and pan around, uh, what that meant was that come the turn of the century, of the last century, what happened was that all of the cattle died as a result of this rinderpest epidemic introduced into Ethiopia by the Italians who were bringing in supplies uh, for their attempted colonization of that area. And the rinderpest wiped out all of the cattle in this area and in so doing reduced the Maasai of the area to 
well, beggars in many respects, and many of them left the area or became sedentary millet and sorghum farmers as opposed to uh, pastoralists, which is what they'd always been. And then, of course, the wood came back, and what the wood did was the wood encouraged an area uh, or encouraged the tsetse fly back into the area, and the tsetse fly precluded humans and cattle coming back into the area, and the wildlife thrived. And just after that, of course, it was proclaimed a wildlife area, this entire Serengeti Mara ecosystem, and only from about the 60s did the, the enormous numbers of wildebeest that we see here now uh, begin the yearly migration. Sorry, let's quickly go back to the cul-de-sac crossing. I can see a little bit of action going on there in a hippo that has just stood up. Um, and so what, what's interesting is that many people, although this landscape certainly has supported this many animals for, well, probably millions of years, the current situation is less than a hundred years old, which I just think is rather fascinating. Now, Julia, you want to know if there's any ecological benefit to having the birds hanging about. You know, Julia, I don't think there's any benefit at all. I think that they just happen to occupy the same sort of habitat. They obviously don't eat the same thing. It's a little hippo's getting a bit restless. I don't see if anyone wants to play. Um, so I don't think, no, that there is a great deal of benefit for, for the birds being there with the hippo. They're not like oxpeckers, although we did see some oxpeckers flying around on the hippo a little bit earlier. Clearly they're not very tick-ridden, otherwise there'd still be oxpeckers there. So no, I think they just occupy the same habitat. I suppose they might alarm call if something really terrifying came along, but you can see that there's not a great deal of a, well, terrified behavioural vibe coming out of those hippo. You know, the swallows picking up bits and pieces off the ground. No, I think this is very special. I'm going to keep an eye out for some bigger crocodiles, see what happens, keep following to see if perhaps the wildebeest don't come down. And I'll just quickly show you where they come down here. They'll come down basically where those hippo are if they come from the north to the south. Okay, let's head back to South Africa where Jamie, not Jamie, Jamie's here, where Ali is attempting to Sherlock Holmesify the Unkuhuma Pride.